morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to I'm Talking Waffles. I'm your host, Ileana. So I had my annual eye exam, a comprehensive eye exam is what I wrote on my insurance check then, just to get my eyes checked because obviously I can't see as, as you do when you get older. And so I went there and I went to a new place. So I used to go to a different eye place back before I moved that was closer to that place. But now that I've moved, obviously I'm going to go to a newer place that's closer because I don't want to Uber like there and back and spend like $40 on Ubers. So I Ubered over to my new eye place and I couldn't find it for the life of me. So I'm really happy that I left early. And so I'm looking around for it. And then I do find it with five minutes to spare. So I was like, yes, this is great. So I go into the eye place and it was really cool. It was different than the last eye place I went to. And that was because they had this one machine that was completely different. So in all the other eye tests I've ever had, you have like the, the one or two, like then that goes in front of your eyes. And it's the hardest choice of your life figuring out like if one or two makes the most sense for how you can see, obviously reading the little numbers and the letters and whatnot. And my least favorite machine of all time which is the one that you're like looking at it and then it shoots air in your eyes twice in each eye. And I never know when it's going to shoot the air. So I'm just like sitting there like internally panicking and I'm like, when are they going to do it? And you see the machine going like, and then it goes, and then you jump backwards. You're like, oh, yikes, that sucks. And you put your eye back in because you know you have to do it again. It's horrible. I hated it. It's my least favorite machine. But the machine that I've never seen before was this one that basically like scanned my eyeball And it was like this bright green light and I had to open my eyes wide as I could. And this bright green light went over it. And they were actually able to show me like what my eye looked like and like the nerves and all of that stuff in there. And it was super freaky, but super fascinating at the same time. So that was cool. And they're showing me it and she's like pointing at stuff and explaining. And I don't know like what an eye should look like. And I was like super worried that she was about to tell me that like, there's something wrong with my eyeballs and maybe I have like some disease or something. I'm like, I don't know, like what's going on? And then she's like, your eyes are surprisingly super healthy. And I'm like, yeah. So I have very healthy eyes. I'm blinder than I was last year. For those of you who understand whatever the heck these numbers mean, I'm minus 3.5 in both eyes, which I mean, that's not the worst because it doesn't matter like which contact lens I put in each eye because I know some people, they have like two different eyes for sight wise stuff. So then they have to figure out like, oh, this contact lens goes on this one. This one goes on this one. I don't have to worry about that. I just plop them in my eyes and I'm good to go. So that's great. I knew that I was going to need a stronger prescription because the contact lens I was wearing previously uh, was, I knew that I couldn't see farther away anymore, like as I used to be. So now I can actually see and it's great. It's like when you get glasses for the first time or contacts for the first time and you're like, oh, yeah leaves actually exist like far away and you can see them and everything's like pointier and sharper so I can see much better than I did last week which is super great so I'm really happy about that and that was pretty much the extent of my little adventures that I've had this week so yeah with all of those little updates out of the way I thought today we would also talk about the summer of 2016 which I know a lot of my stories recently have been about like summertime as a teenager And I decided like, let's just keep going with it like for this month or whatever I decide to do next week. Um, Because I'm starting to remember all of these stories the more I tell them. I'm like, oh yeah, like I had this happen and then this happened. So today I want to talk about the abandoned clock tower in the summer of 2016. So let's jump right into it. So the summer of 2016 is what I like to think as the most iconic summer that I ever had. It was like, think stereotypical teenage friend group doing teenage things. That, that was that summer for me and it was great. My friend group, we actually referred to ourselves as the Black Plague. Don't ask me why, I can't remember anymore, but that's what we called ourselves. And we would go on like adventures all the time. We ended up finding like one of my friends, he found this abandoned like, I don't know what it was, it was like a train yard or a piece of truck it was something but basically it was just abandoned in the middle of this lake and it was really high up and you we would just like jump off of it into the lake and it was great I actually took a polaroid of it somewhere so if I can find that polaroid I'll post it on my instagram so you guys can see what the heck I'm talking about uh we also infiltrated a glow stick run once which don't ask me how we did it but we did we infiltrated it and it was a lot of fun 
and we were covered in glow stick stuff, but it was really good. There were other times where we were just being rowdy teenagers, like walking down the like downtown area, like towards maybe like nighttime. I'd say it's probably like 9 p.m. And a cop actually came over and wanted to check like what was in our pop. We were drinking Mountain Dew at the time. And the guy actually checked inside of it because he thought there was something in it. And he like checked it and he was looking at our friends. And that was a weird time. But I promise you, we never did that stuff. We were, it's iconic teenagers, but we actually didn't do any of the illegal drinking stuff. We just had fun on our own, which was great. But yeah, that is just some of the things that we had. But what really stands out when I think about it was the abandoned clock tower adventure. And so the Black Plague 2016, my town, which was a relatively small town, had this abandoned clock tower for years. Like it used to be active when I first moved there like so many years ago. And it used to have like this little moat and stuff in like it's kind of courtyard then, but it's long since been abandoned and locked away. So no one would, we would never go in there. But in this summer, we noticed that the door was slightly ajar. And that was the first time we've ever seen it like that. And we're like, is, is that open? Can we go in there? And we kind of thought about it. I, I'm pretty sure I was against it because you know, in that friend group, you got the mom friend. I'm the mom friend who's always like, oh, like maybe we shouldn't do this or, oh, do you guys need some snacks and stuff? And that was me. I was the mom friend. But a lot of my friends were ready to do like stuff. And so I was like, you know what? Like I'll go with them, make sure they're safe and whatever. And I was also pretty curious as well, but cautious. And so we go towards it and we notice that like, yeah, it is open. We're like, hmm, maybe we should go in. And so my friend, she opens the door and it's like, really rickety and we're making sure that no one could see us and the door it like it would only open halfway we couldn't open the whole way so we went in very cautiously and there were a bunch of stairs and we're like okay let's go up these stairs and we go up these stairs and again it was so creepy like horror movie creepy luckily though it was bright outside still I would say this was probably like four in the afternoon so the sun was still there it was a hot summer day and we're going up and it's all like rickety. And my friend, she's in the lead of it and she's ready, like down for adventures. Um, and so she opens the door and then we get into like this main, like the main hallway kind of area. And there was broken glass everywhere. There was graffiti all over the walls. There were like sleeping bags and piles of like other linen and stuff, which I assume somebody may have been spending the night or spending a few nights just sleeping in the clock tower area. And so this whole area was like super creepy and not to mention the abundance of dead crows. There were dead crows everywhere and it smelled, it didn't smell as bad as you'd think. It smelled more like musky than anything. So at least it didn't smell like dead crows. And there was like glass and graffiti and all this stuff. And so we're very cautiously walking through and we're also kind of like, really interested and there was like I can't recall why this was here but there was like this really sketchy like big mirror in like the center of the room and we'd have to like go around it and I was like so scared there was somebody in the clock tower who was gonna like jump out at us and we're like eek um but that didn't happen thankfully and so we continue exploring and we're like oh wait look there's more stairs and so we're walking around and being careful not to step on all the glass because it would probably go through your shoes. And so we're carefully walking through and we go up these stairs and we notice there's like this huge ladder, big wooden ladder. And so we climb up this big wooden ladder, being careful not to step on the abundance of dead crows and other random stuff that was everywhere. Not There was also a lot of like bottles and food wrappers. I'm pretty sure there was a Kit Kat wrapper there. And so we're climbing up this rickety wooden ladder. And when we get to the top of it, there's this huge bell for the clock tower. And we're like, whoa, that's so cool. And one of the friends was like, oh, like we should pull that. And I'm like, ah, no, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's gonna break everything or people will know we're here. Cause we're obviously not allowed to be in this clock tower, but teenagers do what teenagers do. 
And so we explored there for a while and it was super creepy, but it started to become kind of cool because we realized there were no people in there right now. And then what we did is we climb all the way up. So the ladder, basically, when you go up to it, there's the big bell on the left side, but you can continue up. And if you continue up, you actually end up on the top of this roof. And this roof was awesome. It was like a bunch of pebbles and it was super, super lawn. And it gave you such an immaculate view of the small town that it was great. And so we decided like, hey, like this is going to be like our secret spot. Again, this is such a cliche like movie moment, but the summer of 2016 for me was taken straight out of a movie. And so that's what we did. This was our secret little spot that we would go hang out at. And it was just like super cool. And we never really saw anybody there. And we would go there and avoid the crows, of course. But it was mostly that roof that we really liked. And we were, I remember like we'd see people walking down there and we're like, oh, hope they don't see us. And no one ever saw us, which was great. And another really iconic thing that happened. So my friend, unfortunately, she had a bad breakup and she was really upset and angry. And so one of the things we did, aside from <laughs> her burning the guy's shirt, recording a video and sending it to him, was we went to one of the thrift stores and we went over to find a bunch of plates. And this was my master idea. And we go over to find a bunch and bunch of plates and we decide, I think we got like 10 plates or something, maybe even more. And we got a bunch of these plates and we go up to like the lady who's like at the cash and we're buying the plate. She's like, oh, like, it's so nice. Like you guys are buying so many plates. Like that's so good. And my friend's like, yeah, I'm going to go break them all. And the lady's like, what? And she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I had a bad breakup, so I'm going to break them in anger. And the lady was like, cashier was at first she was concerned. And then she was like, that's a good idea. Like you do it, like go do that. And so then we had to figure out where are we going to smash these plates? And then we realized the clock tower. Now, again, I'm pretty sure this is the, uh, I have matured since then. Um, so I can no longer get in trouble for this stuff. So this is, this is between you and me. And we go into the clock tower and my friend starts to take these plates and starts like throwing them into the wall, which we did clean them up by the way. And she starts throwing them into wall and like, just like cursing the guy because he was kind of a jerk. So it may, it was fine. And she started smashing them and it was, again, it's like iconic. Like it was, we thought that this would make the most sense to help get the anger out. Cause when you think about like, they have not in my town cause my town was too small, but I know in like bigger cities, they actually do have activities that allow you to like break plates or throw axes or whatever to get rid of your anger. And so this is like our small town way of doing that. And so she starts to break the plates. I broke one just for the heck of it to see what it was like. Um, but it really helped and she was really happy about it. It was a good time. And yeah, that guy's garbage. Another thing that happened in that clock tower, which was pretty scary is so I went to the clock tower with a boy once and we were up on the roof hanging out and these two guys come out of nowhere and they slam open the door where we are and I'm like terrified and the guy's like looking around he's like hey did you guys see um like a guy with blonde hair and a red shirt come up here and we're like no no we haven't because we didn't and they were like okay sorry to bother you peace out brothers and they left and they were so scary they, they looked like they were gonna murder someone so I don't know who the blonde guy with the red shirt was but uh, that was terrifying. So that was the only time I've ever seen anybody in the clock tower. And it was terrifying because I thought that they were going to kill me. <laughs> so yeah, I thought that was a another strange thing that happened. So yeah, during that summer, we would just go hang out in the clock tower. Obviously, other people started to know about it, which also means that the cops were pretty quick to figure out about it. And so my friends, we stopped going because they actually locked it. Like they put this huge like industrial lock on the door so we could no longer go in there. So we decided to go to the back to that lake that we discovered before. So that was our new like hangout spot. And I learned about the outcome of the clock tower from my sister later on. Basically, she had this guy on Snapchat who had posted about being in the clock tower. And it turns out that his next snap was actually him in a cop car. 
because it turns out that the cops had actually put a silent alarm on the place and the teenagers who were going in, they didn't know about that. So they were going in and the alarm gets triggered, cops show up, kids get in trouble. So my sister was like, it's good that you stopped going there because obviously she knew about it because my sisters and I are, we're, we're best friends. And she was like, yeah, like that's so scary. And we're like, I can't believe that guy got caught. And so I remember telling my friends that and we're like, yeah, we're not gonna go back there anymore. So that was our abandoned clock tower adventure. It was a good time. I still, anytime I go back to my town, I look at the clock tower and I'm like, yeah, there was a lot of good memories there, I would say. So it was interesting. And these are just some of the small town things that happen. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I hope that if you had any interest in teenage experiences that maybe this makes you remember about them because if you're like me then you kind of forget a bunch of stuff that happened because it gets replaced with like new memories and stuff but then something happened and you're like oh yeah I remember that and then you kind of remember so if you have any interesting stories you'd like to share of course feel free to reach out to I'm Talking Waffles on any social media platform I'm basically on all of them so search I'm Talking Waffles if you don't find me check another social media platform because I am on all the popular ones so with that, it is now time for everybody's favorite part of the day. That's right, it's the fun fact of the day. So the fun fact of today is, dun dun dun! Before alarm clocks, there was a profession called a knocker upper who would actually go around and knock on your door until you woke up. So this answers that question of how did people wake up for their jobs like back in the old days before alarms and this is your answer, the knocker upper. So interesting i don't think that i really like the idea of someone coming up to my door and just like knocking on it my alarm clock scares me enough a human being knocking on my door is even scarier so i'm happy that alarm clocks now exist because i don't think i could deal with a knocker upper with that i wish you a great rest of your morning great rest of your evening great rest of your night great rest of your apocalypse and great rest of your wacky adventures okay bye